We're live on Facebook here with Steve Lozier, who's the director of the HSC Polytechnic Program. And uh, if you have comments or questions or, or anything, uh, please uh, please let us know. May 8th is the deadline for, for sign up uh, for, your, for your program, which is uh, a week away uh, from today. But what do you see from an FAQ perspective? What are most parents or most kids, what are they concerned about? What do they question? Yeah. What do they want to know? Yeah, I think, um, you know, part of it is, I think we've, we've spent a good chunk of this already talking about why the program, right? Why, why are we, would we need to have this as an offering, right? What's the justification for that? And I'll go back to, I think, um, you know, it, it, you've noted these partnerships and things are kind of revolutionizing education, but, but that's a really great thing. I mean, as, as technology has changed, it's not about what you know, like school kind of used to be, it's about what can you do with what you know? And so, Opportunities like HSC Polytechnic immerse kids in applying and using what they know in authentic and real ways. And when we do that, not only are kids more engaged, but it's often more challenging and authentic to the type of work they're going to do beyond our systems. And so I, I think that's a huge part of that. Um, you know, leaving an, an, an experience with collaborative problem solving skills and design thinking as a method to go about your learning, whether whatever context you might go in, is a huge positive um, because kids are going to continue to develop that. Uh, and then just like I said, the opportunity to explore those kind of career paths. I think that's right. a big thing. So just, you know, tell us why this is. The other concern I think that many of our parents and our community have is what does this mean to college, right? And so, you know, a lot of kids, especially as they're eighth graders going into ninth grade, they're thinking about the next four years and what that's going to prepare them. So this opportunity allows them to explore, but it also guarantees that they're going to be ready for that next phase, um, regardless if that's career or college. And so there's questions out there about, you know, how does this fit with uh, AP and, and, and those types of things? We fully intend to work on having dual credit offerings, right? Which would prepare kids, give them that college level credit and experience with that. And that's gonna be something we work towards. Um, as well as we intend to pursue um, HSC Polytechnic, uh, getting a direct admit to Purdue Polytechnic's program. That's an, an offer that's already on the table for Purdue Polytechnic high school students in the charter system. We're gonna pursue that opportunity ourselves. And so that's another thing where kids are moving into that. Uh, and let me ask you this, Steve, and I should and forgive me, I should have asked this at the very beginning. Um, but what does polytechnic technic mean in, in a traditional sense? And and is it any different with with your guys's program than what most people might be familiar with the polytechnic word? Yeah, so technic is, is you know, multi technicalities, right? So it's, I think we often attribute and connect um, the, the knowledge of that to engineering in a way. Um, this is looking at multiple versions of technology and the way that those things kind of intersect everyday work. And in and, and my understanding of kind of the program and where the program is actually going at Purdue is that as we look at, um, you know, workforce development in the economy in Indiana specifically, um, these skills will come into these different places. And so it goes back to a lot of those competencies and kids having experiences and getting their next skill to, you know, build towards that. The other part of I think that's just as important to understand that's a hub and spoke part of this vision and, and part of HSE Polytechnic. And as we've talked about the concept is entrepreneurship also fits with this quite well. Right. So maybe you have these technical skills that are uh, attributed to some of the, the trades areas we've talked to, but you might need to scale those into a business or change your business model in order to find success and things like that. And so I think those are kind of the balances between the experiences kids are going to have. Now, the uh, the you mentioned Hub and Spoke, which is is an incredible building and facility that is uh, is open now and is uh, mostly completed um, on 106th uh, Street in Fishers. And one of the coolest things about that, with besides the offices and, and some of the manufacturers that are in there and, and businesses that are going to be there, uh, is a makerspace. Yep. Now, a makerspace um, has has kind of caught fire as of recently in the last several years. Uh, different buildings and and co working spaces uh, they have had this makerspace. And yep. for those that might not be familiar with a makerspace, uh, tell us about that. What does that mean? What does that mean for a student? What does that mean for a, for an individual that that might want to be part of your program? Right. So makerspaces, um, again, are becoming a, kind of a, um, a popular thing to be put into educational environments. And it's a creative space that actually 
um, kind of harkens back to if you have a concept of like your shop class or something like that, it's kind of like that with uh, supercharged with current technology. So lots of common equipment that you would see in a maker space would be um, woodworking equipment, 3D printers, um, laser cutters, etchers, things like that. And, and really all that tooling is there in order to help students um, really prototype product, right? And so I think we oftentimes we think about where technology goes, we think about that as devices and, and software pieces. There's also a, a huge hardware need or fabrication need in those environments that's necessary. And then the makerspace also just provides a place for that hands-on transfer of learning, right? So it's not just, I've, I've watched a video about this kind of concept or something, but then I'm gonna step over and I'm gonna apply and use what I learned to create something, to build something. And, and, and in the authentic project work kind of sense, uh, product development will be something that kids could entirely pursue. And, and I mean, we're talking everything from writing your own patents and doing some of those things to get to that level of, of entrepreneurship. And so you're seeing makerspaces uh, appear in the professional world uh, largely because they promote innovation, right? They give people places to create and explore and to um, to do those sort of things, to build something new. Um, and it gets, um, you know, it also, I think, gets back to just that idea of, um, if you're not using what you know to create something, you're not truly transferring it. We call that an education right. world um, in order to, to ensure you've got that skill. And, and I think the other part is kids would have something to point to to say, hey, look what I built with my understanding. That's really what all of education should be about. Right. Yeah. What did I create with what I know? Absolutely. Uh, yep. I'm Adam Grubb here with uh, Steve Lozier, director of the uh, HSC Polytechnic Program. Um, and we have some questions rolling in and some and some comments. And, and it's funny because, you know, there is some some uncertainty and some unknown about uh, Polytechnic yep. as a word and as a as a uh, curriculum. And, and there's really no no need for embarrassment or concern around that because there's so many things. If a kid or a child wants to be anything, at some point, the lessons and the programs and the platforms that you guys have in place can help them get to where they want to be. If they want to be a scientist, they want to be a, uh, a fire chief, if they want to be whatever it is that they, at, a, at a, in high school and as a young age, they want to be, you have programs and you have the the ability to teach them things that will help them get to that next level. So right. it it isn't necessarily the, hey, my kid wants to be a builder or a, a um computer engineer. So right. this program is perfect for them. Yeah. This program is perfect for most students who Absolutely. are trying to figure out, learn and understand their next step, whatever that might be. That's exactly. And thank you for pointing that out. I mean, I think, you know, there's, we're not going to deny that we're in a trades based organization, right? That the hub and spoke is, is founded with that, but the founders of that, that space are so um, they're just passionate about providing the opportunities for kids to explore in that way. And so to your point, I think a kid could explore any type of profession in this program, the way they construct their day, the way a teacher comes alongside them and helps them achieve those goals um, will transfer into those other contexts all the time. And so, yeah, to your point, a fire chief or something like that, maybe that means that they're learning um, it, it, within the school day starts to move out into other areas and, and, and explore those sort of things. The big shift here is that kids have a voice in where the direction of their learning goes and that they have support structures underneath them to ensure that that learning is, is on target to graduate. Um, and one of the things I didn't point out early on is kids can complete coursework at a much more rapid pace in this system than they would in a traditional high school right. model. So we're, we're, maybe you're accustomed to getting a course done over a semester or the course of a year. A kid could finish their Algebra 1 credit you know, by February in the year, and that affords them more time to then pursue those passions, to move in those ways. And guess what? You've got a teacher and an administration sitting next to you helping plan that on the daily basis. And so um, that's just kind of disrupting uh, that traditional education model, again, to take what a student's goals are at that moment and explore those and connect those to the curriculum and the content that they're going to need to show to get their high school diploma. And then that can pivot in any direction a kid wants to go in as well. So um, that's a big part of it. Yeah. And so Rebecca, to answer your question, I, th I think uh, um, on, on uh, Facebook here live, Rebecca, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the program is is set for for kids that that know what they want to do, have have ideas of what they want to do, but the types of of, um, of of jobs and career paths that that are out there, this type of program can help set them up for nothing but but success. Give them an idea and a confidence and and a passion yep. for other things that might be surrounding uh, surrounding their their 
potential uh, so working yeah. segment. Um, yeah. and, and it says here, um, how are they still part of their home high school? Great That's question. An interesting so, question. Yeah. This is a this is a departure. This is where we move from the Purdue Polytechnic High School model um, to the HSE Polytechnic program model. So students are still um, considered Hamilton Southeastern or Fisher's High School students. They will still earn a diploma from those high schools. Um, and so other ways, one of the things the community and the school district are really committed to is there's just other parts of high school that we don't want to take away from our students um, that are just part of that high school experience. So students can still participate in athletics. They can still participate in uh, performing arts. They can still be part of clubs at their home high school. And they can still even, I saw a question about AP courses and other coursework. They can still go back to those home high schools for certain uh, courses that they want to have a part of their experience that aren't offered in-house at the HSE campus. They take those as their passion periods and right. make meeting some of the competencies of the programs through that experience. But again, we're just trying to open up the door of opportunity, not limit those sort of things. And so we worked really hard with Purdue Polytechnic High School to get some of those things accommodated in order to ensure that kids get the, the high school experience that they want to build out of this. Um, and so that that's kind of the way that they can engage with, with their home high schools and, and continue to work within that environment. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's something that is obviously very passionate for, for you and, and something you're very excited about, but there, all the people that are, that are involved in this program all working together. Does, is this very unique around the country? Are you seeing more of these types of, of platforms and, and programs and, and that are available or are you guys kind of creating that, that, uh, that new strategy in a blue ocean? I, yeah, I think it is a new strategy in a blue ocean in the sense that um, we're taking and just transparently Purdue Polytechnic High School is a charter school model that that uses innovative instructional practices. Right. And they have innovated in education in the charter realm. What this does and what I do think is uniquely um, unique to about this opportunity and that we haven't found nationwide. And if people want to send me information about that, but we've tried to look for that. We haven't seen a school district and a city. Com commit to bringing an opportunity like that to a public school district setting and, and providing that opportunity to students and using that. Transparently, yeah. you know, you talk about my passion and some of those things. This type of learning, I think, is what all students should experience, right? I think that um, if we're doing good customer service to students and parents, pursuing their own passions and, and doing that is definitely direction education is going to go. What this does is kind of supercharges that vision of instruction from a district perspective, from a city perspective who steps up and, and makes this opportunity possible. And then some, from in, some innovative think, thinkers in terms of the hub and spoke organization that want to provide that opportunity and say, hey, let's make this a possibility. By the way, we have um, some current needs that we think really align with that, but we really just want to change the way kids are learning and engaging with their high school experience. And those possibilities are wide open at this point. Um, you know, that's going to change and ebb and flow to meet the needs of the community, the students, the student body, and the parents as we build this thing with each year. Well, there's no other words that are more um, specific and true than engagement and excitement when it comes to school. Uh, yeah. and, and, you know, when, when kids are, are committed to something and they're passionate about something and they have, they have a next step that they're going, they're not just going to class and then going to practice and then coming home, right. they are creating, they are, they're making, they are building, they are thinking, and they are connecting with other students like themselves that, that have a, a true passion for something, whatever that might be. Absolutely. And, uh, between HSE and Fishers and Hub and Spoke, you guys have, really put together an incredible program. And, and I, I'm really excited to see how that matures and grows and gives the, the, the next generation of, of workers an entirely different set of standards when it comes yeah. to education. Absolutely. Well, thank so, you for uh, Steve Lozier, uh, for comments or questions on this program, if you have specific things you want to know, hey, my, is my kid available for this or should they be doing that? Uh, where do they go find you outside of the, of the email that's up on the screen now? 
Yeah, so you can connect with me. Also, there's an HSC Polytechnic uh, tab off of the main district webpage. If you click on academics, it's at the bottom of that. Um, all information's there. The student, um, it, it's there right there on the screen right now. The uh, student application is there. There's a ton of other resources in terms of an informational overview about the program and FAQ. Um, I update that FAQ with these types of questions. We're always refining what we kind of want to answer. There's also some student parent testimonials from Purdue. Uh, Polytechnic High School that I think are really telling about where this program goes in subsequent years and the opportunities that it affords students. So be sure to check that out. Uh, and again, my last name is spelled like loser. I'm not hard to find. <laughs> Steve Lozier is with us here. Steve, thank you so much for your time today on this uh, gorgeous Friday afternoon. Facebook Live uh, with Hub and Spoke, Fishers, HSE. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Continued success, Steve. Uh, and if you want to get into the program, you have a week or so uh, from today to get involved and get on the website. Uh, contact Steve, go to the website, learn more and uh, get your child involved. Uh, appreciate your time, Steve. Enjoy your weekend and uh, good luck with the program. Thanks. You too. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Have a All great right. Friday. All right. Bye bye.